Welcome to Electron Line, and now let's talk about parametric equations. What are parametric equations? Well, let's say we have two variables, x and y, and let's say that they both depend on a particular variable other than x and y, let's say another variable called t. Now, let's say that x and y are positional variables. x is the position of a particle in the x direction, and y is the position of a particle in the y direction. And let's say, let's say that t represents time which means that x, the position of the particle in the x direction, is determined by time, and the position of the particle in the y direction is determined by time, so at any point in time we should be able to figure out the x and y coordinate of the position of a particle. When we add all those points together, that, those, those points then will make a curve, and that curve is then called a plane curve. So all the points divided, the, all the all the points defined by these two parametric equations form a plane curve. So x will have certain values for certain values of t, y will have certain values for the same values of t. So we'll plug in some values for t and see what we get for x and y. So let's start with let's say minus two, minus one, zero, one, two, three, and four. Let's do. Let's find out what x is equal to. When t is equal to minus two we get t squared, that would be 4, minus times a minus 3 times 2 is 6, that would be 10. So x would be 10, and if t is minus 2, then y would be minus 3. Okay, when t is minus 1, that would be 1 plus 4, that would be, no, 1 plus 3, which would be 4, and here, if, y is equal to, if t is equal to minus 1, that would be minus 2. When t is equal to 0, x is equal to 0. When, y, when t is equal to 0, y is equal to minus 1. When t is equal to 1, I get 1 minus 3, which would be minus 2. If t is equal to 1, I get 0. For t equals to 2, I get 4 minus 6, that would be minus 2. 2 minus 1 would be 1. For t equals 3, I get 9 minus 9, which is 0. And 3 minus 1, which is 2. And finally, 16 minus 12, which is 4 and 4 minus 1, which is 3. So this gives me a set of coordinates on the xy plane, which represent the position of a particle in the x and the y direction at various points in time. And that's one way to look at it. t could be a different variable, but here it makes a lot of sense to think about it in those terms. So let's graph that. So here we have the y-axis, we have the x-axis, and let's find the point 10 minus 3. So it would be uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, minus 3, 1, 2, 3. So that would be the first point right there. So that's point number 1. Then the next point would be found at 4, negative 2. So that would be 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 2. That would be right here. That would be point number 2. Next point would be at 0, negative 1. So 0, negative 1. That would be point number 3. And I'll show you why I numbered them, because later on I will see a reason, the reason why we did so. So point number four would be minus two and zero. So negative one, negative two, and zero, that would be that point right there. That's point number four. The next point would be at minus two and one. So minus two and one, that would be this point right there. So that would be point number five. Next point would be zero and two. So zero and two, that would be this point right there, point number six. And the next point, that would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, yep, 4 and 3. 1, 2, 3, 4 and 3, 1, 2, 3, that would be this point right there. That would be point number 7. So if t really does represent time, you can then see the path that the particle is taking. And if we connect those uh, points, you can see that it looks kind of like this. Like that. And of course, the particle then would be moving in this direction. And so that's what we mean by parametric equations, that the two variables x and y depend on time, uh, the same time, but different in different ways. And so that's why these are called parametric equations. We plug in values for t, we get values for x and y. When we plot those out, we then get a story, basically a, a um, chronological position of where the particle will be at at various times, uh, at various points in time equal to t. And so that's a nice example. We'll show you a few more examples to get this solidified on how to work with parametric equations. And also, of course, we'll tie that in with what we mean with polar coordinates as well. So that's how we do that.